a lot of people have been saying that you should avoid this configuration of the M2 MacBook Air. Well, I disagree and I'll show you why. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. And this is the M2 MacBook Air, the 15 inch with 256 gig SSD and 16 gig of RAM. And you might be asking, why didn't you go for the 512 gig? Everyone is complaining about how slow that is and how many problems that will cause you in future. Or you could even be saying, why didn't you go for the M1 MacBook Pro, the 14 inch one, because it's a similar price. And to be fair, there is a point in getting the MacBook Pro if you can, but I'll discuss that later. And the other aspect is cost. If you can upgrade one thing, for me, it has to be the memory. Most of any performance issues that I've seen in any computer that I've tested, I'm you know in my 40s, so I've seen a few computers, are to do with low memory. So eight gig is an option for a lot of people, but you know the minute you want to multitask and you want to do a little bit more, then the 16 gig is the safest option. There are many solutions out there, many alternatives that I reviewed here in the channel as well for storage, but there's not that many solutions for memory, right? If you go for the eight gig RAM, you know, you're kind of stuck with that. I just don't like the dramatic aspect of some of these videos. I think you know this, these things cost a lot of money and you gotta be careful with your money. There's definitely a level of truth that the 256 gig uh, SSD is gonna be slower than the 512. That's what the benchmarks will show, but you know, who the hell is out there using benchmarks, right? And I know there's lots of recommendations on YouTube and lots of people criticizing whatever. I'm gonna try to ignore that for the moment and give you my honest opinion on my experience and show you some realistic scenarios, not just in this video, but in my follow-ups as well, where I'm using this machine probably in the same way that you would. And the second aspect is, is a about you. It's about what you prioritize, right? I might prioritize portability, for example. You might prioritize performance. And just to give you an example, right? I did a quick test, which I thought was going to take a lot longer. Right? I said, okay, I've got all these raw images that I take as uh, my thumbnails. There's 900 of them in this folder. I said, all in raw format. I said, okay, let's, you know, put them all into Lightroom Classic and import them. And I, and I thought, well, that was going to take a few minutes, but in less than a minute, they were all imported. And I was applying some presets as well. And then I thought, okay, well, maybe exporting will be slower, right? So I tried to export it to external storage and internal. In the internal hard drive, you know, the bad 256 uh, gig SSD, it took 11 seconds. So that's writing. 900 images, you know, in raw format, you know, in, in 11 seconds. You know, you can talk about multitasking. Oh, Alex, you know, when it's exporting, I want to go do something else. In my case, I was just ignore how fast it was. It's like, there's, there was no time for me to think, okay, maybe I'll go browse the internet and, you know, do my socials or something at the same time. There was no time, you know, he exported that quickly. And I know, you know, real pros will probably be doing a lot more than what I'm doing here, but I wasn't really doing something mundane, you know, 900 images in raw format is quite a lot to process. But I do appreciate that you might be merging photos, you might be doing like panoramas, like sticking 15 photos together and kind of trying to export that. I'm not gonna do those tests today. I, like I did last year with the 13 inch MacBook Air. I'll do exactly the same this year, you know, a day in the life sort of thing as a, as a student, as a graphic designer, taking it outside, not in a control environment, not using the same images, you know, not using the same website, literally just taking it out to a cafe and doing some proper work on it. Okay, the other test that I wanted to do just before I started recording this video was how long it would it take to export like a, an hour, 18 minute video. Multiple layers of 4K videos is done almost an hour now, 50 minutes and is 85% complete. So yeah, it's not great for exporting. <laughs> and look, in the real world, you know, what I would be doing whilst this is exporting is producing my thumbnail, you know, tidying up my script and things like that. Before I worry about the export time you know but for me it's about the experience in the edit itself you know when I was doing the cuts you know making things like slow-mo and adding more layers of 4k you know adding some effects that experience was very smooth and navigating the timeline was really smooth so from a performance perspective you know it's fine the same video will probably take five minutes on the MacBook Pro but if you ask you know can you edit videos on the MacBook Air absolutely and I've used the 13 inch it goes with me everywhere when I go on holiday when I commute to work and to London I don't want to carry a heavy machine this is perfect. The MacBook Air is the perfect machine for that. And I'm kind of amazed that even the 15 inch is so light, it's so comfortable to, to hold and to carry it. I would have no problem taking this with me. And if it takes an hour to export a video, well, you know, so be it. You know, it's not the end of the world for me because what I needed to do was edit the video. That takes hours, you know. And if that experience is choppy and is kind of clunky, you know, th that's gonna be bad, but it was actually pretty decent. Okay, I said I'm not gonna do benchmarks, but I've got a machine, <laughs> I've got. There was a lot of concern when I bought this machine about heat, and as I'm holding here, now this is, it's been exporting a video now for nearly an hour, like I said. It's done 87% and it's still running. So in theory, this should be really, really hot, but there's nowhere on the machine, I, I mean, underneath it, right here in this area, I can feel it a little bit warm, but it is literally lukewarm, it's not hot at all. So let's measure it. 
So it's 91 degrees on the top here, just above the keyboard, which is similar temperature to what's underneath, I presume. So is that 92? Yeah, very similar. So in Celsius, 33, 92 in Fahrenheit. It doesn't get hot, right? It's just, you know, this is very manageable. And like I said, it's been exporting your video for an hour. You'd expect it to be a lot hotter. Now there are some limitations, I'm not gonna lie. And before I talk about that, you may have noticed that I'm using Ulysses and Alfred and other apps in here. And don't worry, I will cover those in more detail in my next video, you know, about the best apps that I use for this machine and accessories as well for it. Which brings me to my usual reminder, if you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up. It really means a lot. It really helps me get the channel discovered out there, you know, still kind of growing this channel. And after this video, have a look around. If you enjoy my stuff, it will be awesome if you subscribed. I'm here at least once a week with a new down to earth tech video for you. Now, when it comes to limitations, the first one that came to mind was using external monitors. You can only connect one monitor, which for me is okay. There are scenarios where I sometimes want to connect two, but with a MacBook Air, actually for what I do is usually not even connecting to a monitor at all. So if you're looking to connect to two monitors, you might need a display switch of some sort, some sort of hub out of the box is not gonna support it. Another thing that I was concerned about was, you know, file transfer speeds and things like that. And in these last few weeks of testing, I managed to transfer hundreds and hundreds of gigs of data and not once did I think, oh wow, this is too slow. Much the opposite. The other limitation is the speakers. Yes, they improved and they are much better than the 13 inch, for example, last year, but they are still quite teeny in comparison with the MacBook Pro, for example. For me, it's not a big deal and I'm pretty sure for a lot of people, it won't be a big deal either. If I really want to enjoy music, I will never use the laptop speakers anyway, even the MacBook Pro. I'll probably use headphones or plug my speakers in. One question that I get a lot is, you know, should I get a lower spec MacBook Pro instead? You know, maybe the M1, the 14 inch M1, which is kind of a, a very on par price. And for me, it comes down to what you need to do. I mean, as you could see here today, even though the laptop isn't meant really for pros, I could do some pro workflows in here. Yes, it took an hour to export a 20 minute video, but you know, exporting photos and things like that was a lot faster than I thought it would be. So yes, there are some pro workflows that you could totally do on the air, but I'd say if you rely on speed and processing power and multitasking abilities, then of course the pro is gonna be the better option for you. But if you're not expecting to use the machine to those limits, then I'd say this is shaping up to be one of the best laptops recently, right? I mean, the 13 inch, was amazing already. I originally bought the 15 inch and I was honestly gonna return it, but I've been really enjoying it. So I think I'm gonna sell the 13 inch and keep the 15 because I do prefer the larger screen. I mean, the display itself is, is really good, right? For, for a MacBook Air, it's great. It's not as good as an OLED display, of course, but it's pretty decent and bright enough. I haven't compared it with other laptops like a Windows laptop, but I think for this price range, what you're getting here is actually not bad. If you do decide to get a Pro though, what I would say is, you know, check the certified program. I've heard some really good things about you know, people getting MacBook Pros for a really decent price there. What about the 13 inch MacBook Air? Should you get that instead? And I'd say only if your budget is limited and you really, really value portability, right? Before I sell the 13 inch, I'm definitely gonna do a comparison between these two, but so far what I'm finding is the 15 inch actually doesn't feel like a compromise on portability, even though it's bigger. I actually prefer that size because it lets me do more things without compromising on portability. It's still a very, very light laptop. Now, what if you already have the 13 inch should you get this 15 inch? And I'd say not really, because you know it's a lot of money that you would spend for, for an upgrade that is not really required. Yes, there's gonna be a tiny difference in processing power because you know you got more CPU cores, but it's gonna be negligible. And I would say only go for the 15 inch if you really, really struggle with the 13 inch from a display size perspective. While you wait for my day in the life videos, check out the 13 inch videos that I've done over here. And if you've seen those already, check out my other videos over here. See you soon.